and in earth as it is in heaven. Have your way in this service tonight, oh God. We don't want to leave without being touched by you. So in this moment, we lift your name and we praise you tonight. Let's clap our hands all across the house right now. In Jesus' name, we love you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If you've got a need in your body, I invite you, please come forward at this time and we'll pray with you. And let's worship as they lead us in song tonight. Again, what you done for me. Yeah. 
come on. Does anybody have that testimony? Just take a look at my life and you'll see the mighty hand of God at work. I think it'd be in order if we thank that mighty hand for the work that he has done. And I believe there's more yet to come. Greater things are in store. Greater testimonies are still to come. If you're thankful, let's praise him all across this house tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. We love you. We love you. We love you. We love you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He's been so good to us. Amen? Amen. It's so good to see everybody tonight. It looks like we have a few friends and family still sticking around from the holidays, Christmas we just had. Why don't we go ahead and take a moment here, take some time, shake some hands, hug some necks, let somebody know you love them tonight in Jesus' name. Everybody make your way back to your seat. We will quickly move through these announcements. There are so many of them. I've got Santa's list of announcements here, it looks like. Just kidding. No, super easy. As you all know, tonight is going to be foot washing immediately following service. We're going to have a great, great time. Don't skip out. It's going to be good. But next Sunday, everybody say next Sunday. Next Sunday at 6 p.m., we're going to have our communion service here. It's going to be an awesome time. Yeah. It's going to be fun. We'll kick off the new year, and it's going to be just awesome. Please do not miss out. That's Santa Claus' list of announcements. You may stand with me, please, as the ushers get ready to make their way forward. We're going to go ahead and prepare to worship the Lord in our giving. And as we all know, there are three ways that we can give and worship in our giving, that you can drop something with the ushers here, 
in the offering bag. You can text to give the number on the screen, and you can also give online at porterapc.org. Amen? Let's lift our hands and let's pray for this offering tonight. Lord, we thank you for another opportunity to give. We pray that you would bless the gift and the giver alike, God. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. I will not die. I will declare and lift you by Christ revealed and I am healed in Jesus' name. have a good Christmas. Had a wonderful time. Well, somebody didn't get what they wanted, I'll tell you what. Did everybody have a great time? Is he, st- is he still the reason for the rest of the season too? Oh, good. God is faithful. Thank you, praise team. Thank you so much. I know we, uh, Many still out of town. I've gotten so many texts today. People on the road, people coming in, people still over with families, and then some sick, and then others watching online. And that's all right. That's okay. But we did, we wanted to have the service anyway. And I know you know foot washing night is usually just the most well attended service of all. I mean, usually they just cram them in here. Everybody wants a good foot washing. I mean, my goodness. Some of you are like, listen, the moment we dismiss, I'm going home. <laughs> well, you know what? I want to take just a little while tonight. It's always great to be in the presence of God. And uh, somebody asked, people ask me sometimes, I said, Brother McCoy, there's some things we do that don't make sense. And I agree. There's some things that, you know, just don't make sense. Worship, sometimes the way we worship, that doesn't, Michael David's wife taught us that worship doesn't make sense through a window. Looking at it from the outside, it just doesn't make the same kind of sense that it does when you've been through what that person's been through. See, some of us, we look at each other's worship, and it makes perfect sense because we know they weren't supposed to be here. They weren't supposed to have the family. That kid they had wasn't supposed to live. We know all, We know that they should have been in the pen, should have been locked up, should have been this, should have been. We know the rest of the story, and so their worship makes a lot of sense to us. But to somebody on the outside looking in, they're like, I, I don't get it. I understand that. I had somebody, you know, I. You ever invited a guest on foot washing night? Did that once. They're like, listen, uh, there's some things I understand. There's some things I don't. This is on that list. Well, then why do we keep doing it? Because it is one of the things that he said to keep doing. And there's a reason for it. And I'm not going to take a long time tonight because I know we're going to have a time of prayer and, and foot washing tonight. But I do want to go into it. It's, it's so much more than a, a, a spiritual pedicure. It's so much more than a reason, you know, to have your feet. And it's more needful now than ever before. To truly understand what we're going to do tonight and why we make time for it, you really have to go all the way back to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2, starting verse 1. Brother Nathaniel, I apologize. I forgot about this one. He did his job. I, I, I dropped the ball. Philippians chapter 2 verse 1 says, If therefore, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem each other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind, where does this mindset come from? I'll show you. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. And was made in the likeness of men, 
And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmurings and disputings. And I'm going to stop right there. And I'm just going to take just a little while this evening on the servant's call. The servant's call. We are never more like him than we become a servant. Not to just the people we like. You know, a lot of us are like, oh, I'll do anything for you. You're my best friend ever. He washed Judas' feet too. And in the world that we live in today that has become more self-centered than any other time before, now more than ever we must make every effort to not lose the mind of Christ, the spirit of Christ, and to not lose that attitude of a servant. I want to take a little while on that. Can we pray that God would help us tonight? It's a very, very precious and special thing that we're doing here tonight. Lord Jesus, we love you so much. You see in the world that we live in with everything that we are surrounded by, so many things that try to get us stuck in our own way of doing things, try to get us stuck in our own little world. But, Lord, I ask that you would help us tonight. Give us a glimpse of what you have called us to do, to be the servant you have called us to be, to make a difference in the world around us. Speak to us through your word. God, let your spirit move in this place in such a mighty way. Have your way tonight. And we give you all the praise and the honor and glory to your name, Jesus, and everyone said amen. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. He said, you know, he he could have made himself, he could have came. In fact, that's one one of the reasons the Jews had some issues with believing he was who he said he was is because he didn't come in the way that they thought he should. He didn't you know, he didn't come down with all of this army and everything else, but instead he came wrapped in swaddling clothes in a manger, sharing space with the animals and the livestock and everything else. Everything about Jesus said, I'm available. Everything about him said, I'm approachable. The kids wanted to get to him. Oh, no, 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 not the kids. He said, no, suffer not the little children to come unto me. Let the children, in fact, if you want to go to heaven, he said, you've got to become like these. They said, well, okay, well, what what about the demoniac? He said, let him come, bring him to me. Oh, those are the lepers, keep him away. He said, no, 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 let the lepers come. Oh, well, those are the sick and the afflicted and those are the poor. He said, oh, no, 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 let them come. He made himself available to all the kinds of people that everybody else didn't want anything to do with. Zacchaeus, we don't want anything to do with. He said, I'll go home with Zacchaeus. Oh, the woman, man, the, the prostitute, this woman called him. Oh, you don't want to. No, 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 I got mercy for her. Made himself up. The shepherds, who wants shepherds around? He said, I I want shepherds around. It didn't matter what it was. He made himself available. That was anything but what they expected from the king of kings when he showed up. They thought it would be, boy, it was going to be something spectacular. And it was, just not in the way that they thought. It was spectacular because he didn't come robed in all the gold and the jewels and everything else. And he didn't show up with all the army at his side. No, it was spectacular is that he showed up in a way that every single one of us can approach him. Isn't it amazing that you and I, with all of our mistakes and all of our issues, have the opportunity, not only the opportunity, but the invitation to come into his presence and to boldly approach the throne of grace. What an amazing, amazing God that we serve. He was spectacular, but in a whole different way that we expected. And then he turns around and he says, let this mind which is in Christ Jesus also be in you. Make yourself available. Oh, let me tell you, COVID, I'll, I'll tell you what COVID did. 
Now, you, we all know, yes, COVID taught you how to door dash, taught you how to Uber Eats. It taught you a lot of things, taught people how to watch online. But let me tell you what COVID did. It brought out who we'd really like to be and who we didn't want to be. It really showed our true colors and what it is because it gave us an opportunity to not have to do the things we really didn't want to do and not feel bad about it. Sister Regina here. I remember, it, I'm going to tell you, there was something that happened in COVID that just, it got to me. They told us, they said, you can't have more than 10 people at church. I was like, okay, well, that's, that's me. We got a keyboard player. We got the organ. We got a, the, the drums. We got the guitar. We got the singers. And we got, pretty soon, we were at 10. We maybe even broke the law a couple times and had 12. We were sitting there. But do you know what we did? And I'm, I'm not bashing we're not beating up on anybody but there wasn't a line of people saying i refuse i am going to be here no because it's kind of nice you know you're in your pajamas and you know I, I i would love to think that everybody was gathered around their couch dressed for church and just having great service but realistically what it probably was is playing sorry on the kitchen table with the service running in the background i'm just saying that's how it goes. But in the middle of all this, something got me, you know, and, and they told us during COVID, they said, you know, you, especially with your elders, you need to be careful with your elders more than anything. And I remember that night, boy, they told us we, we couldn't have that many people. And Sister Regina Patterson showed up on the door. I was like, what? Well, maybe there's something. She came in, and boy, she came in. She said, oh, please, Brother McCoy. Please don't make me stay home and walk. Please don't make me not come. I just don't know what I'd do if I couldn't come to church. Please, I, I, I won't tell. I, I'm telling you, I, 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 I don't want to get anybody in trouble. Please don't make me not be able to come to church. Boy, I wasn't telling that lady to go home for nothing. I'll tell you what I did. I turned around and said, you know what, God, let me have what she's got. I want that attitude that says, listen, I, I don't know how to make it without your presence. I don't know how to just look at it from afar off. There's something in me that, I, that I've got to be in his presence. I've got to drive a little faster to get in town on time if i got to. I, I'll come. I may, I may come straight from work, and I'll be in my work clothes, and I don't have time to get changed. Uh, you know, maybe the kids made it without their shoes, and they made it without socks. And, yes, I didn't say hello to somebody because I didn't even have time to brush my teeth, but I made it. I knew I had to make it. I didn't make it perfect, and I didn't make it with everything together, but I had to make it to the house of God. Man, I, God, don't ever let me lose that kind of an attitude. But in the world that we live in, it, it was very easy, and it wasn't just COVID, but, but just in life in general, it is so easy to get stuck into this rut of what, what's good for me. You know why people leave churches? What's in it for me? You know why people go to other churches? What do I need for me? Well, you're saying everybody, no, no, I'm not saying, I'm just saying these are the things we do. This is, this is how it is. We deal with things that we like things our way. And we assume that everybody else would like things our way too. If I asked you, you know what? How many of you are cold? How many of you are hot? See, we are in a bind. Because somebody's going to get upset. How many think it's too loud? How many can't hear? Now we're in another pickle. Can I tell you, you are never going to get it right. You just got to get inside of your mind. There's some things I don't particularly like, and there's some things that I really do like. But I don't come for the things that I particularly like my way or that I don't. I come because what I need more than anything is I need to hear the word of the Lord. I need to feel the presence of God. And, yes, I know I can feel those things at home, but it doesn't quite compare to being surrounded by my brothers and my sisters who are praying together and encouraging. There's just, there's just no replacement for the church. And the greatest enemy of the church is me. The me monster is the greatest enemy of the church because the strength of the church, the strength of it is in unity. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is unity. 
when his spirit comes in, it will bring unity. But disunity will also drive out that spirit. Gossip will drive it out. Talking about one another, which is gossip, talks about a, a love for the world. These things don't mix. There's got to be a unity, and unity doesn't happen when there are individuals or when a church is made up of individuals that are like, well, what's in it for me? It's, it, what's good for me? What do I want it to be? No, no, no. What we've got to do is we've got to get the mind of Christ. That same, that same mind which it was in Christ Jesus has got to get us and say, you know what? I'm not just here to get something for myself. I'm not just here for the music. Go ahead, music. I hope you got a good one together for me tonight. I, I came in here. Feed me. Feed me, feed me, get me. No, no, hey, I understand we all need to be fed. We need to hear the word of the Lord. But we we got to come in with two different prerogatives. On this side, I'm coming into the house of the Lord saying, oh, I'm going to get everything I can from the house of the Lord. I'm going to get everything I Let me tell you, when we become well off, I'm, not, I'm talking about after you've heard every song out there, then we get a little bit of, and I'm not saying we, I'm not being mean, we get a little stuck up. Oh, that's not my song. They didn't sing any of my songs tonight. That's just not really the ones I like to hear. Well, here's an idea, sweetie. If you can find find one of them that glorifies God, just sing with that one. They're not all going to be my style, but I'm going to find some way to praise God in the middle of it. It's not all going to be for me. Well, he told the story of Jonah. I've heard the story. I could have told this. He missed, the preacher missed some details that I knew about the story. Do you remember when you first came to God? You remember when you didn't have a clue that anybody loved you and you didn't have a clue that there was a that there was a tomorrow and that there was a future. You didn't think, man, God don't want nothing to do with me. I've been so messed up. I'm a hypocrite. I'm a scoundrel. I'm a liar. I'm a thief. I'm a cheater. He don't want anything to do with me. And you walked into this place just holding on to your last hope, just hoping that you hadn't done so much that God couldn't forgive you. And they started singing about the grace and you've, you'd heard amazing grace a hundred times, but you were so desperate that it hit different and oh my goodness they started singing about the love of God just so sweet to trust in Jesus they started singing about heaven they started singing about loving God and about his mercy and almost every song was for you why because because I was so hungry I was so hungry to feel his presence I was so desperate to get into his presence I, every single song now oh, that's my song oh that one's for me oh he see and the preacher got up and he, he didn't have a doctorate degree and he hadn't been to seminary and he hadn't spent 14 years on that service no, it was a simple sermon talking about the grace of God and the mercy of God and the love of God and that God had a future for you and you hung on to every word because you were so desperate and you didn't think anybody cared about you and every word was like, oh my goodness, you couldn't wait. You didn't care what they sang at the altar call. You didn't sing if the main drummer was out. You didn't care if they didn't have a keyboard player inside. You were just saying, oh, just open it up. Just give me an opportunity. Oh, I didn't know that my life could be changed. Just Give me an opportunity, preacher. I don't care what they sing. They can sing come by y'all, and they can sing it without the instruments. Just give me an opportunity to talk to this God that you've been singing about and preaching about. And God picks us up, cleans us up, and all of a sudden, the songs become familiar. Now when they're singing them, it's not registering now when they sing about the love of God and they start singing about amazing grace we've heard it so many times now it's just it, it, it doesn't penetrate we're looking around see who's here and who's not here and who ought to be here and who don't deserve I can't believe they're worshiping like that oh my goodness look at that look how they're acting right there you know what you saw what they said on Facebook now they got the audacity to come in here and act like they love God same song same spirit and we're not desperate anymore that preacher gets up and is preaching, but now it's. What are you doing? I got a lot going on now. Yeah, he did all right. You know, he went 22 minutes and a half. <laughs> Not talking about me, obviously. Like, you know what? I t- what happened? We start forgetting where we came from. All of a sudden, it's not for me. And this ain't for me. And that now I got some expectations, preacher. You you need you know who you need to bring in. You need to you need to bring in that one that's really good. You need to come on. 
You need, you need to bring in that preacher that I like, that one that really talks to me. You mean the one that studies out of the same Bible as all the rest of them? And it gets his sermon from the same God that gives all the rest of them? So, you, so you're not in love with the Word and you're not in love with God. You're just in love with the mouthpiece. That's idolatry. He said, I won't share my glory with another. You don't want the Word. You just want it through that piece. He, come on. I'm not bashing you here tonight. I'm telling you, if we want God to do something, we got to get a fresh understanding that God, don't let this ever get cold to me. Don't ever let me be indifferent to the Word of God. If I'm 80 years old and God still hadn't come and they get up there and they start singing Amazing Grace one more time, God, don't let me be so far removed from where you brought me from that my mind, hey, God, let me to remember in that moment what it was like when nobody else wanted me and nobody else cared and let it work on me that time just as much as it did 60 years ago when that altar call goes God I don't want to be looking around deciding who needs it and who oh, it's me it's me oh Lord standing in the need of prayer I need it today like I needed it the first I need it just as much as the drug dealer and the drug addict and the alcoholic and the messed up family and the messed up home I need it it's for me the altar's still for me And with all of this mindset, we become so hung up on what's good for me. And all too often, the things that get left in the past, when we're tired, you may say, well, what does this have to do about foot washing? Well, some of it, nothing just need to be said. Why is it when these two opposing things meet together? The stuff I got to do in the world and the things I need to do for the kingdom. Why is it this one always gets left behind so that this one can happen? Come on. Pastor, I'm sorry. I couldn't make that. I, you, you know I needed that. I needed that trip and that trip and, and they were biting and the deer were moving and, and, and the weather was perfect and I hadn't been away and I needed some me time and I, I needed this time and I, you know what? The thing that always gets left out, we don't spend that much time here. What is it, Wednesday, Sunday morning, Sunday night, three hours, four, five tops, and yet that's the thing the enemy always convinces us. Well, well if I'm too busy, well, <laughs> I'm not going to quit working at overtime because, well, because I like it. But I can't quit singing in the choir. And I can quit teaching Sunday school. And I can quit being an usher. Now, I'm not going to give up. The other activities I got, I'm not going to start going to bed early. No, I'm going to stay up and do this and do that, and I'm going to stay I ain't giving up my eight hours of social media a day. I need to know what's going on in people's lives. But I will drop out of my hostess duties, and, and I'll quit the praise team. And I, You know what? That, I just got too much going on. How is the world going to go if I don't keep these likes and all that going on Facebook? How are they going to continue on without me letting them know they're doing a good job? If I don't check out all these pictures of food that people are posting and let them know it looks good to eat, even though it wasn't even good by the time they finally ate it, I was sitting there. I ain't going to embarrass them because I don't know which one it was. We were somewhere and we were eating. My, boy, they brought us our food. My, I went to eat it. My son's like, we got to take a picture of it. I said, we ain't those people. It's hot right now. We're eating it. I'm, I said, boy, I felt, man, I felt some resistance there in the spirit. Some of you like, you took four pictures of your food before you ate it today, uh-huh. It was cold when you ate it, but it looked beautiful. Our world is addicted to self. and You can't have the spirit of self and the spirit of a servant at the same time. The greatest tool of the enemy is distraction. Some of us are like, well, I'm not doing this and I'm not doing it. The scripture doesn't say to him that do bad, to him it is sin. The scripture says to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. 
well, I'm not doing that, and I'm not. Yes, but are you doing that which you know is right? Are you doing what you need to do? Are we doing the work that God has called us to do? That's, that's the thing right there. How do I do that? I'll tell you how it is. And why is it such a necessity? Because our world is full of hurting people. Our world is full of people that don't think they have an option and they don't have a chance. And God sent them someone. A lot of us, we were around there praying like, God, send somebody to this world. He did. It's us. That's what he called the church to do. To re- well, 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 I'm not perfect. He didn't ask for that. None of us are perfect. If that is, w- if that is what decides whether we can be used or not, then I've got to set this microphone down. We won't have anybody to sing, anybody to play, anybody to open a door. If perfection is what we require in order for us to be used, then there is nobody that can be used. What are you saying? And I'm saying you do the best you can, and you make a difference everywhere you can, and just be thankful that, you know what, I'm so glad that God keeps working on me. I don't know about all the rest of you, but I woke up this morning needing God to work on me. And when I go to bed tonight, I'm going to go to bed tonight knowing I need God to work on me. And I'm going to wake up in the morning needing God to be merciful and gracious and to keep working on me. Because let me tell you, I am not there yet. I haven't made it. I haven't finished the course. I haven't, I, I'm not making 100 on every test. But I'm going to keep taking them. And I want to keep doing better and better and better. But I'm going to tell you, if you're going to make a difference, if we are going to make a difference in this world, the only way we're going to do that is with the attitude of a servant. And that's not a popular thing. We don't even know each other anymore. How many of you remember getting on your bicycle and just, t- you got home? When I got home, I got on my, what, well, man, GT Dino. That's what it was. That was the bike with the stunt pegs on the front and the back because you were so much of a friendly person, you could bring somebody on the front and the back. And I've sinned a little bit and taken some dice off of the neighbor's car tires for my the little air caps. My dad made me give them back. It was very embarrassing. The pastor's kid had to go next door to the apartments and knock on the door and tell the man I stole the little, what do they call those? I stole his valve caps. And I had to invite him to church. It was extremely embarrassing and humiliating. But I can remember that's what it was. And we took off. Looking back, I'm like, man, my my parents were crazy, or they did not love me and wanted me to be kidnapped. Because I didn't have a cell phone. I didn't have anything. And we took off, and I just had to be home by dark. That was my regulation. We lived on 39th Street, which was, I mean, a two-lane highway. But, I mean, it was the busiest, busiest street in Groves, Texas. And we lived right there. And we just went out the front door, played in the front yard. I mean, I was eight. And I just took off, and we'd come. I'd meet their friends and their friends. We would show up at piece of people's houses, and we would go in, and whoever's house you went to, they would usually feed all of us. Usually it was fried bologna, or you'd get something like that. You know, yeah, y'all don't know nothing about some of you. Like, I would never eat bologna. Oh, let me tell you. I ain't nothing. My favorite thing is, oh, some of you right now, y'all like, oh, you were so. We were just poor, but we didn't know we were poor. Man, I'd get that bologna, and it had that little red strip around it, you know, you couldn't eat, and you'd eat all the bologna. And then you, I had that gap in my teeth right there. You'd put that little red piece right there, and boy, it cleaned that whole thing off. See, y'all, I was living. bunch of fancy people over here. I'll tell you what. This is Porter. I know where we're at. You know you had it too. Now, most of you don't know your neighbor. In fact, even if they're outside, you don't look at them. Don't look at them. Just, just try, I mean, you probably hit a mailbox or two trying not to look at the neighbor. We are so... Inside, we've made it to where we can do everything fun and never leave our homes. But it's not, uh, are you getting on to me? No, I'm just saying, it's our world. Everybody's getting more and more inside of their own. The problem is there's a lot of hurting people out there that need somebody to tell them, hey, there's a God that loves you. 
there's someone that cares about you. And what we have got to do is pick our head up out of the sand and realize, hey, the enemy's trying to keep us distracted. The enemy's trying to get me so busy buying stuff. We spend money we don't have buying stuff we don't need to impress people we don't know. Come on. People are like, I don't know how I can, I, I just, I can barely make it. That's because you're buying stuff you don't need. You don't even need that. Now, if you're blessed, the fact that you can get those things and it doesn't send your life into a tailspin where you're stressed out to the max, then God bless you, get it. But if you're buying stuff you don't have to have, buy the cheaper car. Live in a little older house, that's fine, so that you can live without the stress and all of that junk. Quit trying to keep up with people that don't even know you. When you finally catch up to them, you're going to realize they were trying to catch up to the people in front of them. Forget it. Paul said, I've learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. There's some stuff I don't have. Have, and there's some stuff I do, but I tell you what I know I do have. I got a God that loves me, and I got a job that He gave me to reach into this world around me. Let me tell you the day they put your body in the ground or my body in the ground, there are not going to be people that show up and be like, I just came to celebrate His life because He drove a car that I always thought was the nicest car. And I found that he passed away, and I asked around and found out where the man that lived in that house on the corner. I don't know him, but I was so moved by the house that they lived in that I wanted to come and celebrate his life today. No, they're going to put a bid in hoping it's cheaper because you're gone. They're going to be looking at the ads hoping your spouse sells that car that you tried so hard to get. Let me tell you who is going to be there, though. Every person that you reached out to when nobody else loved them, there are going to be people there that say, hey, I'm here today to celebrate that person's life because when nobody knew my name, they loved me, they called me, they checked on me, they made me know that there was somebody out that loves me. You want to know how your life can make a difference? It's not in stuff. The stuff doesn't matter. The greatest thing that it can make a difference is loving people. And the only way I can truly love people is I've got to get the heart and the mind of a servant. That's what he said here when he goes to foot washing. In John chapter 13 and verse 1, he says, Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that this hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and he was come from God and went to God, he riseth from supper and laid aside his garments, and he took a towel, and he girded himself. After that, he poureth water into a basin, and he began to wash the disciples' feet. Now, you have to understand, just a little while before this scripture, the disciples are sitting there, and you know what they want to know? They don't want to know, how do we get to heaven? They're not asking, how do we please you? You know know what they're asking? Who's going to sit on your right hand? Who's going to sit the closest to you? What's this one going to do for the kingdom? What kind of position is this one... And Jesus, having given everything and loving us so much, looks around and says, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. If this attitude gets into my people, it will kill everything that I came here for. If this attitude of what's in it for me and who's better and who gets the solo and who, who does it better and who's more important, if this attitude gets in there to where which ministry gets me more platform time and is the nursery duty better than the hostess duty and is that better than the pray? If this attitude that one person's ministry is greater than another person's ministry and this person's calling is better than another person's calling and, and this person's better, if we let this kind of hierarchy get into the church in this way of thinking where we start depending well this is where you came from God so you're a nobody oh you were born into this you are upper escalon you're somebody you got to be here for years and on probation for the next 30 years till you prove that you're here 
He said, oh, no, 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 no. If this mindset gets in here, it will kill everything that I've decided because the church is for everybody. It's to reach into the world. It's to reach to the lost and the hurting and to the nobodies and to the somebodies and to everybody that needs him. He said, if this attitude gets in to where we start walking around with our nose so high in the air that we drown if it rains. He said, if we start getting to where we're walking around, and hey, let me tell you, and it has gotten into the church. I walk around in market baskets and I see people like, oh, hey, look at them. They're one of us. And I go to say hi. And it... Like they won some spiritual lottery. And they're probably thinking, oh, everybody's looking at me thinking how spiritual. No, I'm looking at them saying, it's going to be lucky if they make it to heaven. They may go to church, but that's a devil attitude right there. You know what we ought to do? We ought to walk around happy as could be and everybody they say, hey, hey, let me tell you what God did for me. I'm a nobody and I got a messed up life, but let me tell you what Jesus did. And if it wasn't for the grace of God, I, man, I'd be locked up or I'd be messed up. I don't ever want to walk around like I made it and I'm so, oh, no, no, no. You can't see the hurting around you when you got your eyes uplifted like your son. No, 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 no. They hate me because I, I yell at them. Hey! Hey! Makes them so uncomfortable. What church do you go to? Because nobody around them really thought they went to church anyway, the way they're acting. I want to. Well, somebody said once, I said, well, why do you do that? I said, I want, I'll tell you why. Because there's people watching. And they think that we believe the same thing. And I want them to know that not everybody's like that. That there's some people that love people and that we ought to all walk through. It looked like they sick for the rest of their life and they ate something bad and their stomach hurts. Let me tell you something I've learned. You pull enough layers away, there ain't nobody walking around in perfection. Let me tell you something. Some people are all flesh and no spirit. But nobody is all spirit and no flesh. Everybody's fighting something. I had one man tell me, he said, not me. I have brought myself. I've come. I said, oh, no, you, you, man, you got the worst one. You got pride. That's the worst one. That one completely destroys. So Jesus looks around. He says, oh, oh what's this competitiveness here? Instead of being happy for somebody that's being used, now I'm mad that they got used more than I got and that that one got this and this one. He said, whoa, whoa, what is this, what is this attitude that will derail? How are you going to break it? How are you going to do it? He said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. See, when you went home, it wasn't like you and me. We didn't, when they walked down the street, they didn't walk down in nice leather and nice shoes and all. No, they had sandals. And they walked the same road that the donkey walked down. And they, they walked the same road that the horse rode down. And they walked the same road that the chickens walked down and that the pigs walked down. They walked the same road that the camels walked. They walked the same road that all the animals walked. And they didn't have, they weren't nice, prim, and proper like some of these places, you know, where you got, you got your pet. And if there's an accident, you got to walk around clean after your pet. If that's the only reason, I wouldn't have a pet. That ain't happening. That's a messed up world. Some of you are like, oh, I'm glad you're not in my neighborhood. Me too. Some of you, I don't know who's walking who. But it wasn't like that here. They didn't have little areas set aside. So you weren't just walking on a road. Everybody's like, there's a promise coming down that dusty road. It wasn't just dust on the road. And you've been walking in it all day, and it's, it's, it's under your feet, and it's in between your toes. And, and So, y'all, y'all, we spoiled foot washing. Hopefully, everybody, you know, took a couple showers before they came tonight, like just in case. Not them. And so, when they would come inside of a home, the lowest servant on the totem pole, the lowest person of the house, their job was to come and to meet them. And before that person would track all that junk through the house, they would take off their shoes at the entrance. And the lowest servant, the nobody, would wash their feet and would clean all of that off of their feet. 
Jesus says there's only one thing that's going to conquer that kind of an attitude. And he goes and he gets the basin. He rises from supper. He lays aside his garments. He takes a towel. He girds himself. He pours water into the basin. And he began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter said to him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? And Jesus said, Musicians, you can get ready. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. And Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. And Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my feet. And then he says, Jesus saith unto him, He that is washed needeth not to save, not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore said he, Ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet and taken his garments and was set down again, he said to them, Know ye what I have done to you? He said, Do you know what I just did washing your feet? Sounds like a parent right there, doesn't it? I know what I did, but do you know what I just did? Yeah, you, you, you washed our feet. He said, yes. You call me master and Lord, and you say, well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. Neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. He said, don't miss this. The greatest among you, let him serve the others. He said, if I, with all of my position, with all of my importance, if I am your Lord and Master, and I can serve you, then get everything out of your mind that tries to tell you that you can't serve each other. I'll tell you what's missing in a lot of churches in the world we live in today, and that is serving one another and loving one another. We've got to bring that love back like it's never been before. Because let me tell you, when somebody walks in out these streets and they walk into this place, it's not the music that's going to make the difference. And yes, they love the sermon, but a sermon without the active ingredient of love isn't going to matter. Let me tell you what they want. They want to walk in knowing, hey, is there somewhere where somebody will love me? Why love? Because love conquers all. You don't have to look like me for me to love you. You don't even have to agree with me for me to love you. He set the bar pretty high while we were yet sinners. He gave his life for us. I'm going to tell you what we've got to do is we've got to get that kind of attitude towards one another. Because there's something that is rampant, not all over the world, but especially in America, and that is this feeling of entitlement. We're so blessed. I told someone the other day, they, they were like, well, you know, we're, we're doing so poor. I said, no, no, no. We all know the scripture where it says that it would be easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to go to heaven. And I asked the church then, I don't know if some of you remember that. I said, do you know what it takes to be in the top 1% of the richest people in the world today? And I think this was actually in 2021, I believe it was, or 2020. But the household income, not not individual, the household income of the top 1% richest people in the world was $32,000 a year. You know what that means? I would say almost every single person in this building, he's talking about us. We're so blessed. God's been so, I'm not saying your life's perfect or mine's perfect or we've got everything. We're blessed. We are so, so blessed with so many things that we take for granted. And the number one thing the enemy wants to try to take away is that love for each other. 
We can't lose that. We can't quit serving one another. We can't quit walking into this atmosphere saying, hey, what can I do? Where can I give back? Is there something I can do? Well, do you know how to, I, you know what, I can't sing the solo, but there's something I can do. I can run the sound or I can run this. You know what, I can drive a van and go pick people up. Do we have a, do we have a soup kitchen somewhere that we can go serve at? Is there someone I can go bring food to? Is there an elderly person I can go cut their grass? Is there somebody I can pick up for church? Is there somebody that needs a ride for a hospital checkup or to this or that? Do they need any help cleaning the pews? Do they need, you know what, is anybody going through a hard time and just needs somebody to come and spend some time with them and listen? to them. And they, what are you talking? I'm talking about going back to serving one another. Because every single one of you matter. And I'll tell you what is not the will of God. It is not for the church to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and for there to be a handful of people that go around trying to take care of all the needs. It can't happen. But what happens if every one of us get a hold of that understanding that who am I without him? God, if you would do that for me. There's something very humbling about taking someone's foot in your hand. Well, I don't know that person. If I can't wash their feet, how am I going to sit across from them and let them know I love them when they've lived a life full of stuff I couldn't even imagine? How are they ever going to know I love them? If this is hard for me, There's something, I don't know why Jesus did that. I I believe he just knew there was something inside of me that would break when I took someone's foot inside of my hand like, oh, that's gross. Oh, that, it is. But every time you do it, something inside of that hard heart cracks a little bit. And there's something in that, in, in, in the arrogance of me that all of a sudden it breaks down a little and it reminds me, I'm nothing without him. If he did all that he did for me, God, help me not to be lifted up in my own sight. Help me not to be arrogant. Help me not to be full of pride. Help me not to miss out on every opportunity to touch a life that is broken and hurting. Help me not to get so consumed with catching up with the Joneses and getting my life where it needs. Help me not to get so consumed with this bank account and driving that car and living. Help me not to get so consumed with this life that I miss out on everything that waits for me at the end of this one you know what really matters it's not these pews it's you you matter it's all about you the church was for you the walls, the music, all that none of it matters without you and none of this matters if it's not going to make a difference to anyone out there You know what I'm praying this year like never before? That God gives us a love for people like we've never had before. I'm talking about people that you thought you'd never be close to. I hope God puts something inside of you and you become friends with someone that is just the opposite of everything you ever thought that you would be around and that your love for them does something. That I pray that there's somebody out there, they've got a messed up life, they don't think anybody cares. And when you go walking through the mall, God's going to put something inside of you and you're going to feel drawn to that person and you're not going to be able to get away from it. I'm talking about a place where you got to walk up and say, listen, I don't know what this is. This doesn't make sense to me, but there's something about you. I just wanted to come and tell you that Jesus loves you, and all of a sudden tears start pulling out of that person's eyes that you don't know, and you had no idea they had issues. The next thing you know, you're at their home this night on this week, and this night on next week, having a Bible study, and and then on the other side, now you're calling and talking to each other, helping each other. Next thing you know, they're sitting right beside you, and you're praying together, and you're helping one That's what it's all about. You're here because of somebody else. Yes, my mama. Well, your mama was here because somebody wanted her. No, her mama brought her. Somewhere down your family line, they were here because somebody else reached out. Let's don't let it end with us. Let's reach out. There are so many hurting people in this world. God, give me that same attitude. Give me that same spirit. That's why we wash the feet. That's why we don't get rid of it. I've had so many people tell me, like, look, we've come so far. Maybe that's the problem. We've come so far from where we were intended to be. I don't want to go that far. I want to always take every opportunity I can to remember that I am nothing without him.
because when I remember that, it helps me to love people that my flesh would like me to stay away from. The more I remember how gracious he was to me, the more it helps me show grace to others. The more mercy that I realize that he's shown to me, the easier it makes it to show mercy to others. You can't make it without that. Somebody in your life is waiting for you to make the difference in theirs. Amen. I want us to do something right now if you'd stand with me. I thought I'd just go very, very quick tonight. And just be, But I really feel that this is such a precious thing. I remember a man once, a very wealthy man. <laughs> a very, very, very. There's wealthy and then there's really wealthy and then there's this don't make sense wealthy. We, we, we're not talking about cars and houses, we're talking about malls and planes and this. You want to know the service he did not miss? The one where he got to go around and he would wait and he'd see, because you know how it is, I know how it, we'd have foot washing night and I'd go over to my brother Nathan and be like, right here. Because I made sure he washed his before we went to church and he checked with me too. I was like, look, right here this is where we're going to serve one another because we know you know how it is you already got yours picked out for tonight you already went to him like listen it's me and you okay we, we, we know each other this man very clean man very distinguished man he would wait and he would look for all the people that nobody wanted to do and that was his thing he would go around and that's the people that he wanted to wash. He said, it helps me remember where I came from. It helps me keep this heart from getting hard and lifted up. He said, I try to take every opportunity I can to remind this flesh. Everything you've got, you've got because God gave it to you. You don't get to get lifted up. He said, when I give my offering, I said, well, you know, would you, you just give it? He said, no, sir. He said, I write and I write the zeros until it hurts. That's when I know my offering was the right one. He said, why? He said, because if it doesn't bother my flesh, then it's not good for me. He said, I, God's been so good to me that I know how the enemy wants to trip me up. And I'm always looking for an opportunity to remind this flesh, you are not what got me here. It's him. And you will never run my life. He said, and it was one of the most gratifying things going around he said and getting to make a difference in someone's life he says I'll remember when it was me that's what it's about it's about serving one another I know you've got your family your situations and your but I ask that God would help us I wish every family in this church this year would make up your mind to reach out to somebody maybe you don't know or that you're not close to and be intentional about starting to get close to these people say you know what I'm gonna I'm gonna make it I'm gonna make a point to be involved in their life. I'm going to make a point to check on them. I'm going to make a point to be a friend of that one. I'm going to include other people. I'm going to quit just trying to do my thing. I'm going to show up to church with my group. Then we're going to go out to eat with my few. And then we're going to go home. And that's, no, 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 no. I'm looking for somebody to serve. I'm looking for somewhere to serve. I want my life to make a difference. I know that's not easy. But I promise you it's worth it. I wonder if we could. This is the last service of this year. I wish we could gather around. If you want to gather around with your family, if your family's not here and you want to gather around, you know what? If your family's here and you see somebody and their family's not, just go ahead and add them to your family. But why don't we come gather around tonight? It, those in the balcony, I understand it's all the way down here. If you want to gather up there, that's fine. With your families or together, however you want to do it. But I tell you, what, I want us to close out this place tonight. Before we go our separate ways, before we head the, for foot washing, I want us to take a moment, this last service of the year, I want us to pray over our families. And I want us to pray against every spirit that would keep us in isolation, every spirit that pride, every spirit that would try to come against us, that would try to hinder us from making the difference and being the light that is supposed to shine in this world. You know what I want you to pray? God, lay somebody on my heart this year. God, lay somebody on my heart. Lay a family on my heart. Help me, God. Open my eyes 
to the people I've never seen before. Open my eyes to people that I've taken for granted. Help me. Help me to make up in my mind, God, I'm going to make a difference in somebody's life. God, this year, help me to see the hurting like I've never seen before. And this is what I want you to pray, if you're willing. God, I'm asking you to give me a sensitivity. Help me to hear the cries of hurting people. Help me to hear past when they say everything's fine. Help me to hear what they're really saying. Help me to hear the cry of hurting people all around me and not to just walk by. Help me to see beyond what what it looks like on the outside. Help me to see where there's a hurting person and to see that individual. God, help me to be sensitive to the leading of your spirit. God, help me to make a difference in someone's life this year. Help me to reach out like never before. That's what I want us to do. I want us to be a people that reaches out everywhere we go. Whether they look like you, whether they're a different or whether they speak a different language, maybe they've never been in church in their life. Maybe they don't even believe the way you believe. Love them anyway. Make a difference. Reach out to them. That's what I want us to be. That's what God's calling us to be. Amen. All over this place tonight. Come on, can you pray with your family and with those around you and whoever's near close to you? Come on, can we pray right now? Can we ask if you're watching online? I know many have texted and said you are. Why don't you gather around your family and your home right now? Those of you that are on vacation and said we're watching from vacation, that's fine. Gather your family around right there. Moms and dads, pray over your family. Pray over each other. God, speak to us tonight. God, help us tonight. Give us a love for people. Give us a love for one another. Help us to serve one another. God, help us to make a difference in the lives around us. God, every hurting person we come into contact with, give us the words to say, the wisdom to know what to say, a boldness to say them in the right spirit, with the right attitude. God, lead us to the hurting. Lead us to the broken. Help us to be a light to this world, to this city, to our neighborhoods, to the people we work with, to the people we meet every day. Help us, God, to be a light in this dark world. Help us to love people the way you love people. Lead us, God, to the broken, to the hungry, to the weary, to the hurting, to the addicted. God, help us. Help us to get out of our comfort zones, to love people regardless of where they're from they look like or what they're going through God give us a love for souls a love for people unlike we've ever ever had before give us a servant's heart God help us to serve one another to serve those around us to serve you and God even to serve those God that we come into contact with in this world help us to be your hands and your feet County God, help us to be a light that shines everywhere we go. Let it start with us. Let it start in our home. Let it start in our family. Help us, Jesus, to be what you have called us to be. doesn't matter what clothing separates us. doesn't matter what part of scripture that we obey and how we dress and how we live that gets the attention of others. If the only thing they see when we get their attention is an attitude that is not like his, 
That's false advertisement. The greatest thing that people need to see in our lives is love. By this shall they know that you are my disciples. Your love for one another. You're not all alike. That's all right. Love each other anyway. You're not all going to have the same preferences. That's okay. Love each other anyway. Well, I, I just don't. I know. There's somebody that feels about you the same way you feel about that. Just love each other anyway. Let God deal with the rest. My job is to love people. Because here's the thing. You can't change anybody and I can't change anybody. Only God can change someone. That's it. And the greatest thing that I've seen that brings about change is love. Perfect love casteth out all fear. One I heard it say once said, only light can drive out darkness. The only thing we can do, if we can love like that. He said, love conquers love. He said, though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, if I do this and I do that, if I, if man, if, if, all, if I have all of these giftings and if I have... And I have not charity or love. He said, I'm become as a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal. God, help me to love like I've never loved. And I'm going to tell you what helps is when you keep in your mind where God found you and where God brought you from. That's the number one thing that will protect us from pride, from arrogance, from self-righteousness. It's love. Love one for another. It's what makes the difference. It's what makes the difference. Amen, amen. What a wonderful group of people. I was actually surprised because of how many texts and so many people still out. What we're going to do at this time, for those of of you that are wanting to join into that, the ladies will be staying right here in the uh, sanctuary. The men will be making their way to the fellowship hall. Remember Sunday morning, we have Sunday school Sunday morning. Sunday night, we will be taking communion right here. We will have a time of prayer and consecration. Starting off this new year, we will have a time of communion. And then starting next Sunday, we will start our church-wide fast. And uh, I'll, I'll deal with more of that on Sunday. But right now, uh, the ladies, if you're not a lady, please don't stay here in the sanctuary. We do not want to make it uncomfortable for anybody. But the ladies will remain right here. And the men, if you will make your way over to the fellowship hall. And uh, we'll uh, carry on and start the next, next part of this. God bless you. Ladies, if you don't.